Hi, my name is Ravi. Today I'm working on Toyota Corolla Allion 2007 1.5 liter four cylinder car. Customer complaint is on this car is rough idling and he mentioned that it has an annoying vibration at the idle. So let's diagnose it. Several shops have tried to figure out what is the cause for rough idling on this car, but they found nothing and most of them opinion was this is normal for this car. But customer consider again and again that this car has very annoying vibration which is not normal. Uh, sometimes it gone but most of the time uh, that rough idle is present at the idle. So let's diagnose it in our way. Okay, first thing first. I have hooked up the scan tool and uh, let's get the data and any fall code present regarding this rough idling situation. Here you can see the vehicle details. Uh, basically, this is Toyota Corolla Allion and model is NZ T260 and engine is 1NZ FE. So let's go ahead. First, scan uh, entire system for the fall codes. AC system has a fault code, uh, you can see here B1421 solar sensor circuit. So I don't care about this code because this will not affect for the rough idling. Let's go to the engine control module. You can see here there is no any fault code in the engine control module. So I go to the read data stream and see the data stream uh, while engine is running what is going on the uh, data stream. Okay, start the engine here. After I let it to be idle for a while, so I can feel now that vibration. Uh, actually, it is not normal. So I will take you out and uh, try to show you the vibration under the hood. Actually, there is a bit of abnormal vibration on this engine, but uh, I don't know whether you see that uh, vibration on this footage. Anyway, let's go to the diagnosis and we do uh, further diagnosis. Okay, I'm in the live data stream. So let's see uh, any abnormal data pit here for could cause for the uh, engine vibration. Here you can see the lambda is around uh, 0 0.9, which is perfect. And uh, also AF sensor current uh, flow through the zero line which is uh, normal and uh, that should be like that here alternator output duty over 58 uh, percent seems to be a bit higher uh, but who knows uh, let's see what going on there anyway um, here you can see battery voltage is around 13.5 uh, which is normal in charging voltage but calculated load also 33% seems to be a little bit higher at the idle. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Okay, uh, coolant temperature is normal at the 93 uh, degrees. Here idle RPM is uh, 625, but it should be a little bit over 650. Uh, and here we can see. Uh, all the other data is uh, seems to be okay. Uh, let's go further down and see what's going on there. Here ignition advance is around 5 degrees which is normal at the idle. Uh, we can rev it up and see. Uh, okay, you can see here it rises perfectly up. Uh, let's go further down. Uh, here injector port is around 2.5, 2.6 uh, seems to be normal and then uh, here you can see long term fuel trim around 2% uh, positive uh, fuel trim uh, seems to be th there's no any issue with the fuel trim and mass flow sensor also around 1.5 which is perfect for this 1.5 liter engine uh, that's normal and i rev it up and uh, you can see that graph uh, rise up gradually So uh, here is short term full trim. Let's see is there any abnormality. No, uh, that's also 2.3% uh, percent, which is very normal. Mm, okay, let's go further more. Uh, we can see the throttle position any abnormality here. Uh, 
but uh, what we can see here actually uh, you can see here throttle position command is around 0 0.7 uh, volt and also throttle position in the same voltage that means uh, it's uh, it's on the target voltage so it's perfect i think so now i turn on the ac and um, also i turn on the headlights and i i need to see what's changing and i need to see that uh, is it uh, idling up furthermore when uh, get any additional load interesting you can see here idle rpm has been dropped after i applied some uh, electrical load like ac on and headlight on so i need to make sure that uh, the system is not idling up when i apply some electrical load so let's go ahead and uh, uh, load some more data and see is it idling up or not okay i have loaded several data pits here let's go to the graph mode and then we can see perfectly uh, first i turned off again uh, the electrical load which i applied already look at this uh, mass airflow sensor data pit is not normal here 1.4 mean uh, it's not normal it should be over 1.5 gram per second and uh, all the other data pit seems to be okay but uh, here you can see isc position is around 0.9 uh, so what we can do is now we go uh, ahead and apply the electrical load like AC on and uh, let's see. Okay, you can see uh, mass airflow sensor has been risen up. That means uh, more air come in, comes into the uh, engine. Uh, that means uh, it's idling up. And also the ISC position has been raised up to the 1.7 from 0 0.9. So uh, it's clear that uh, system is idling up when we apply any electrical load. Uh, at the idle okay i turned on the headlight too uh, here you can see mass airflow sensor data has been risen up that mean a uh, uh, little bit uh, idling up so what i am going to do now apply the gear into d position and let's see what's going on there uh, you can see mass airflow sensor data has been risen up and the isc position also has risen up to 2.2 uh, degrees so that means this is perfectly idling up but however system is idling up but the engine is shaking or vibrating that means uh, engine has a abnormal load or it get abnormal load uh, but i got a point that mass air flow sensor data was uh, in abnormal position while idling uh, while at the idle without any electrical load so uh, let's chase this point and uh, try to find any uh, vacuum leak or something like that because it can happen when it has a vacuum leak okay after let it to be idle for a while again you can see mass airflow sensor hit 1.2 1.3 gram per second which is very abnormal for at the idle this engine 1.5 liter engine so seems to be it has a vacuum leak to make sure that vacuum leak i load uh, full trim data beside the mass airflow sensor data let's see what's going on there with mass airflow sensor data when mass airflow sensor data hit 1.3 and 1.4 something like that uh, you can see short, long trim stay around 2% and also short, short term trim uh, rise up a little bit uh, higher like 3% this is not a huge value but uh, it indicate little bit of lean condition here I rev up the engine around uh, 1700 rpm you can see long term full trim has been fallen down uh, to minus one around and the uh, short term full trim also falling down that indicate a vacuum leak this is a, a small vacuum leak so we have to find where the leaking vacuum okay I'm going to do a smoke test in order to find the vacuum leak uh, but I don't know whether I will find that vacuum leak with this smoke test anyway i don't believe that uh, such a small vacuum leak effect for the rough idling situation uh, this car suffer right now i use this vacuum hose that goes to the purge system to insert smoke into the inlet manifold uh, smoke will come out from any leaky hole in the intake system if present I search around the inlet manifold in order to find any smoke leaking out but actually nowhere I can see until now but let's see. 
okay uh, i found small leaky hole on the valve cover that smoke is coming out uh, hope you can see it uh, but i don't know that leaky hole on the valve cover could cause to the vacuum leak uh, but you can see here this hole is very close to the pcb valve that connect with the vacuum hose then there is a possibility to leak outside air into the vacuum through the pcb system Here you can see that smoke is blowing out from that small hole. Okay, here is that leaky hole. Uh, and here is the PCV valve very close to it. Uh, through this PCV vacuum hose, outside air could leak into the inlet manifold as a vacuum leak. So, closing this valve by hand, uh, let's check scan data that any changes take place. Uh, before that, I will show you the scan data here. You can see long term fuel trim and short term fuel trim hit uh, positive values. Uh, simultaneously, you can see MAF sensor hit uh, below 1.5, mean uh, around 1.4 gram per second, which is not normal for this 1.5 liter engine, as I told you earlier. So, I uh, close this hole using this rubber glove and let's see what will happen to the data. Okay, uh, look at that, uh, what is happening. Short trim is dramatically uh, get down. So that means uh, there is a small leak. So that is clear, there is a small leak. Uh, short term trim has fallen down to minus uh, 2%. And also you can see now, uh, MAF sensor hit around 1.5 gram. So uh, definitely this is a vacuum leak. We have to close this hole in order to get off this vacuum leak. But still, I don't believe that this small vacuum leak affect for the rough idling. link. Uh, let's see after close this hole and stop the vacuum leak. Hope you can see that uh, short term fuel trim has dramatically comes up uh, as soon as I get my hand off from that hole. So definitely there is a small vacuum leak. Okay, I poured some uh, metal binding epoxy into that hole and closed it. Uh, let's go to the scan data and we'll see what is going on there. Beautiful, vacuum leak has been fixed. You can see here both fuel trims has come down near zero which is perfect. Also mass air flow sensor now hit around 1.5 gram per second which is acceptable. Although that abnormal vibration is present here. You know that uh, customer original complaint was rough eyed link so definitely we have to chase this rough eyed link case. Already you saw that uh, I observe the scan data and did some test but nothing helpful all the tests are okay uh, now i have to find another direction to find out what is the cause for this rough idling case as all the scan data is quite normal what i believe that any additional load get into the engine and engine drive to the rough idling so what i suspect the alternator because alternator can bring such kind of additional load if it is faulty it can bring such kind of additional load into the engine so now i am going to check the alternator here i am going to do the alternator ac ripple test that check the uh, any faulty situation in uh, in the alternator here i am using hs502 oscilloscope which is supporting uh, built-in ac coupling function and definitely for this test we need a scope so i will show you how to set up the uh, scope for this test first uh, take a one channel and put your positive lead in the B post on the alternator and then uh, same probe negative side you have to connect to the alternator ground or alternator body take the ground connection in this test I am going to measure how much AC voltage emit into the battery side from the alternator output my scope is rolling here so I will show you how to set up the probe for this uh, alternator ripple test just you need to uh, couple your channel from DC to AC. Uh, remember that you need to AC coupling supported scope. Otherwise you need a uh, separate AC coupler. So here I start my car and uh, let's see uh, what will be the AC ripples in this alternator. Before see the AC ripples on this alternator, I will tell you what is the acceptable value. Any good alternator should not emit over 500 millivolt of AC voltage. Uh, it definitely it should be lower than 500 millivolt wow look at that top of the screen you can see over uh, 2 volts of peak to peak voltage that means uh, this alternator emit over 2 volts of AC ripples into the system definitely this is a bad alternator 
uh definitely this value is not acceptable if it is a good alternator the uh, ac ripple should be lower than 500 millivolts uh so now we can understand uh where come from this additional load into the engine this bad alternator bring this additional load into the engine and uh, drive this engine into the rough idle uh do you see that how much shaking this engine so it has a very abnormal uh, vibration and definitely it has a rough idling as the customer complain uh, before go to this ac repair test actually we did that uh, isolate the alternator by disconnecting its uh, power supply uh, what we realized that no more shaking or vibration uh, rough idling gone away even though we can't call on this alternator without proofing it uh, that is why i did this ac repair test now you can witness it how much bad this alternator anyway uh, this test should do under electrical load and without load uh, actually we did both uh, all the way this alternator emit over 2 volts of ac voltage uh, so basically this faults goes into the diode plate in the alternator but who knows uh, maybe other faulty component in the alternator could cause to emit uh, that much ac voltage so we are done uh, this car need an alternator or repairing the alternator to get off from this rough idling problem i just diagnosed this car uh, repair depend on the customer's decision thank you for watching stay subscribe with us for more diagnostic videos